Okay, I want to do another video here about this Martin Richling guy. I know I said I wasn't going to do any more, but uh, two emails have convinced me that I need to say something else because this guy is a lot more dangerous than I had previously realized. Um, and I have a responsibility to warn the flock. Okay, there are a lot of people that are new to the Bible believing, King James Bible believing issue. And they can see a guy like Martin Richling and think that he's a King James Bible believer and get messed up. Okay, And I know even a novice Christian can see through the guy, see he's wicked and evil and everything else. I understand that. But uh, I'm just going to make this video anyhow. Okay, The first email that I got, and I'm not going to be sharing this one uh, because I don't know if she will want me to or not. But uh, there was a sister that wrote to me. And uh, you can post your comments down there if you want to in the comments section. And she's basically uh, looking at a divorce coming up as a result of Martin Richling. Martin Richling has gotten to her son and to her husband, and they are going to leave her as a result. And you say, well, Brian, what if what if this uh, what if this woman is is wrong and she's bad? And whatever? That doesn't give you grounds for a divorce. Even if this sister, and I don't believe that she's bad, okay, if you're watching, you know, I don't believe that you're bad. But what I'm saying is, even if you're the most apostate, you know, wicked, whatever, your husband still needs to stay with you and still needs to talk to you about these things. Uh, spiritual apostasy is not scriptural grounds for divorce. All right, that's not, you have no right to divorce a wife because she doesn't agree with you on certain passages of the Bible. All right, that doesn't work. So that right there I thought was very tragic, that Martin Richling is actually destroying people's minds to the point where they would actually divorce, a man would actually divorce his wife because of Martin Richling's teaching. That's very serious. But you see, I found out something even more serious. And this is, not only is it uh, a very, very serious but it totally disqualifies Martin Richling from being a pastor. Um, I mean, this guy is incredibly evil. All right. Now, I have the letter, and the man that sent it to me is a man that has known Martin Richling for over 30 years. Okay, This guy knew him long, long, long ago, and uh, he knows some very uh, bad things about Martin Richling, some things that need to be brought out. Now, I will say this, the guy that sent me the email, I believe he's hyper-dispensational, and I disagree with that, okay? I, he disagrees with me on the thing of salvation, whatever else, okay? We're not going to get into that in this, in this uh, video here, but I need to show you what Martin Richling's past is all about as a professing Christian, okay? This is not his... I, I won't judge a man because of his past lost life, okay? Richling, I said things about him being in prison and stuff, and that's supposedly where he got saved and whatever, and he was a crooked cop before then. And the only reason I, only reason I brought that up is because he, he does not come out and say, hey, it was bad, I did some, some things wrong. He never showed repentance for his former life. That's why I judge him, okay? Because I don't think he ever came out of his former life. We're going to see that in this email here. Um, and this letter... I have it posted down in the description box. See, so all you got to do is you can click on it. It's word for word, verbatim, from the way the guy sent it to me. Um, his name's Steve Bruni. He sent the thing. I'm going to read it right here online for everybody to see, because it's very important to understand what Martin Richling is all about. Let's begin here. It says, I wish for the letter to be published in its entirety, as I believe my life may be at risk, and I believe the context lends support to its veracity. So here it is. I'm publishing it. And it's in, in its entirety as well. As the sum of the events happened almost 30 years ago, and the exact minute, hour, day, and week may not be perfect, they all preceded Martin Richling's incarceration for corruption. Okay, for, this, for the record, I believe Brother Phelps is a saved man. I fundamentally disagree with some of his inter interpretations and application of the Bible. Truth be told, I align myself with Richling's but not his ex execution of those truths. Some of the beliefs Martin espouses, I taught him. Again, I would disagree with him on a lot of what Martin Richling teaches, but we need to get into the actual 
what Richling has done in his past and the fact that he's never repented of this. Again, these events followed his salvation and preceded his incarceration where he claims his salvation, his true conversion, in other words. I met Martin at the Shorewood Bible Church around 1985. I was disheartened by the legalism I encountered in a Baptist church. I joined after my salvation, April 1, 1980. I started to find the truth not in legalism, but in grace. It led me to meeting Charles Richard Jordan at the Chicago-based Berean Bible Society. Berean Bible Society is a name of hyperdispensationalism. Okay, it's a hyperdispensational group. All right, and you got to watch out for that. I've talked about that in other sermons, but we'll continue here. He had been called up from the South to be the next president of the society. While up there. Up here he acted as the interim pastor at Shorewood till one could be chosen. I met Martin, who at the time was a nighttime or night security guard. He had been recently saved because his uncle had consistently challenged his Roman Catholic beliefs. Finally the Lord broke him down and he trusted Christ's death as payment for his sins or for his sin, excuse me. Now, I believe what happened in reality is Martin Richling uh it's all his his uh, relationship to the Lord is all up here, you know. Uh, they ha he has the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but he's never actually come to the Lord as a sinner, and called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Okay, he's not about to repent of his past, and his past needs to be repented of. Okay, this guy's wicked, very 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 wicked. Martin had been married twice prior to his salvation. One resulted in a child he completely walked away from. This will happen again after his salvation and just pre his incarceration. You uh, have a child and you walk away from the child? The Bible says, if any provide not for his own, and specific, especially for those of his own house, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And he's a pastor. Sure, sure. Right. I met Martin one Wednesday night at Bible study and hit it off. Martin was outgoing and extremely charismatic. His job behind a desk allowed him plenty of time to read through his KJV as his job was at night. He and I grew to become friends. Our conversations were mainly biblical in nature. One evening I remembered learning that in the KJV that the middle book, the middle chapter, the middle verse, middle two words are the Lord. Amazing. And I have a video on that. That's actually not true. It was found out later on. It's, it's another verse in Psalm. But uh, anyhow, being in Acts 9 dispensational church, I joked with him saying, you're not going to believe what the middle word in Paul's epistles, not book, chapter, verse, words were. He spent nearly three hours counting words before I called him back to tell him it was a joke. He was truly a devoted, saved Bible believer. I don't believe the saved part. You're going to see why. During our stay at Shorewood, Martin had written numerous salvation tracts, had led many folks to Christ. From roughly 1986 through 88, our church would spend a Saturday passing out tracts and street preaching. It was during this time that we came across a tract that Jordan okayed that was passed out, which was a Lordship Salvation tract. Uh, I don't know about that, but anyhow. The young man which brought it forward, who was fairly new to grace, but had a zeal for souls, was shocked when he really saw what the tract said. This young man would eventually step forward marry and adopt the three children Martin would marry and sire and abandon later. <laughs> nice group. Martin uh, tired of his job with security and came to work for me. I was a painting contractor studying for the ministry. He worked for me for roughly seven months. Towards the end, a new pastor was found for Shorewood. Jordan was going to need all his resources for the Brian Bible Society. Jordan would need a assistant. Martin had continued to grow in his knowledge of the KJV and Grace. Richard Jordan was a strong proponent of the mid or for the mid acts, which I believe is correct, and KJV, which I believe is preserved, not inspired. Again, I have issues with that. There was a revolt in the mid acts movement away from the KJV only stand at the Bible Society and its financial supporters. Martin overheard a compromise struck between the then presiding president Cornelius Stam, C. R. Stam. There, uh, he's written books of, of, about the whole hyper dispensational system and the soon-to-be Richard Jordan to cut back on the KJV rhetoric. The proof was evidenced in a September, October, November 1988 Berean Searchlight magazine where Jordan compromised his KJV stance that it was adequate, sufficient for the purpose, really God's word sufficient or superabounding. To his credit, Martin called Jordan on it 
with folks at conferences and at Shorewood that Jordan had to make a decision. To his great credit, Jordan chose the truth. They both lost their jobs, and curiously, the Berean Bible Society has expunged that period of history from their society. If you dig hard enough, you'll find what I'm saying is the truth. My wife at the time had a best friend whom we introduced to Martin. They soon wed and in time had three lovely daughters, two of them twins. After his dismissal from the Berean Bible Society, his wife, through connections her father knew, got him a job as a policeman in Melrose Park, there in Chicago. Okay. He had been training his Rottweiler, Boris. He was able to incorporate him into his job. He began training on the side. It was during this time he began training my neighbor's Akita. It was during the, this period of time that Martin started fornicating with my neighbor's girlfriend. He's a married man and he's committing fornication with a other man's girlfriend. As a professing Christian. It was discovered and culminated in a plan to run off with her and desert this family. I don't remember what stopped it, but his wife forgave him and they went on. While on the force, he told me of the corruption there and that he had been approached by the FBI to be a snitch. He refused. His brother-in-law was also on the force, a genuinely good guy. After several years, I noticed a change in him. He wasn't speaking about the Bible nor giving the gospel out as much. He started purchasing things a quote-unquote new cop couldn't afford. Gee, you wonder where he's getting the money from. He goes on to tell you. I found out later he'd through his job had met and fornicated with over 50 women, some to get out of tickets. He'd also been shaking down traffic stops, in particular illegals, on Friday, payday. He said they didn't like banks, so they would keep large amounts of cash either on them or at home. He said he could spot them driving because they had on cowboy hats. When the money was exchanged, no words were exchanged, for he feared wires, a gesture rubbing his thumb across his fingers. No, I fear wires like that, you know. I guess that's what it was, anyhow. Towards the end, he started fornicating with one of the cop's wives. Several shakedowns went bad, and he and his partner were busted. During this time, he moved in with the girl, this girl, and left his wife and kids. The husband of the wife he now was with testified against him. Martin con confided in me later he wasn't poetic just justice. He got immunity. Uh, he was rightly convicted and was jailed. Not sure if he married this new girl, but after he went to prison, she left him. There are many things I left out for brevity's sake, as this isn't the easiest thing to do, drudging up the past. These are all tr true Steve Bruni. Right there you have it. Okay? So, by that standard alone, the Bible says that a bishop is to be the husband of one wife. All right? Richling has had countless women as a professing Christian. Uh, so that test right there, he's disqualified from being a pastor. He has no right to be preaching the Word of God. And if it's true that he has been with at least 50 women, that he has blackmailed them into committing fornication, this man is not a saved man. I know that a saved man can get messed up and can do things that are stupid and whatever else, but that's the kind of stuff, that's the kind of thing Bill Clinton was doing in Arkansas. I mean, we are talking a very, very corrupt man, a very dangerous man, extremely dangerous. And I just, I had to make this other video. I needed to share this thing. He asked me to help get this thing out. I want to get it out there. People, if you know of anybody that is following this Richling, warn them. All right? This isn't just a matter of, well, you know, he's kind of eh, a little messed up. or This guy is a serious, serious false prophet. And Martin Richling, if you are watching this video, you need to drop your pride and your self-righteousness. Your only chance of getting saved is that you need to come to God as a repentant sinner. You need to Come to Him in a broken state. You're not broken yet. Your relationship with the Lord is strictly intellectual right now. It's all up here. It was Roman Catholicism all those years, and then you saw some guy that had superior intellect to you. So you said, I'm going to study that so I can have that superior intellect. That's all it is. Martin Richling is not a saved man. 
There's no way. There is no way that a man doing all those things is a saved man that has the Holy Spirit of God in him. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I've been saved too long. Okay? I know. I can spot people like that. I mean, give me a break. <laughs> Even if you're not saved that long, you should be able to spot this guy as a, a false convert. So, please warn everybody you know about this Martin Richling. All right? Uh, we need to get this guy shut down. We need to get this guy to... Be silent, because he's making real, true Bible believers look bad. All right, by feigning that he's one of us, he's not one of us. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I just I needed to make this thing because that email just really blew my mind. I thought, wow, you know, very, very bad. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching, and uh, let's pray that this guy either gets saved or gets gone. We need to get rid of this guy from the realm of Bible believers on YouTube. We need to get this guy off of this off of this uh, website, YouTube. So that's it. Thank you.